Welcome to Kaleidoscope Pro from Wildlife Acoustics. This video will describe how to use Kaleidoscope Pro for sound pressure level analysis. With the release of Kaleidoscope Pro 5.3, the Noise Analysis tab has been renamed to the SPL Analysis tab. SPL stands for Sound Pressure Level, and this is a more accurate description of the function. This video was originally made when the tab was called Noise Analysis, but all the features of this tool remain the same. I've got a directory of recording files that were made at the same location at different times over the course of part of a year. I'm going to use Kaleidoscope Pro to do a batch process to analyze these files for sound pressure level over time. I'll start by assigning the input directory for the source files and an output directory for the analysis results. If these folder locations are on my local computer, they can be assigned under the Batch tab. For my example, I'll be using input files that are currently stored in a managed cloud account. Cloud-based input and output directories are designated under the Cloud tab. I'll also designate an output directory in the managed cloud account which will allow me to take advantage of cloud-based computing. Noise analysis only works in non-BAT analysis mode, so auto ID for BATs has been disabled. I'm not interested in doing any cluster analysis with these files, so cluster analysis is also disengaged. Under the noise analysis tab, I can specify which weighted frequency bands I'd like to analyze. You can see the range of available bands include one-third octaves, standard A, B, C, and D weighting, NOAA weighted bands for marine analysis, and broadband flat weighted bands. Multiple weighted bands can be selected for simultaneous analysis. I'll choose the common A weighted band. A weighting provides a frequency response curve that represents the typical perception by the human ear to sound over the audible frequency range. The Noise Analysis tab also provides options for what information that will be included in the output results. Kaleidoscope Pro can provide separate results for minimum SPL, average or mean SPL, maximum SPL, and cumulative sound exposure levels. For my analysis today, I'll select minimum, mean, and max levels for the output results. The next set of options include the sample period, dB adjustment, and cumulative peak and off levels. The sample period is used to analyze levels within one second periods over time. This is used if the source recording files are not continuous, but you'd like to see a general average of levels over time. dB adjustment is used to compensate for variables such as microphone sensitivity and additional gain changes in the signal chain before the audio is recorded to a file. If the recordings have been made with a Wildlife Acoustics SM3 or SM4 recorder, information regarding gain settings, preamp settings, and ADC converter offset will be included as metadata in the recording files, and Kaleidoscope Pro will automatically compensate for those variables. The SM4 recorder has the option to enter microphone sensitivity measurements, which are then included with the recording files metadata. If these variables are part of the metadata in the recording files, no further adjustment is required in Kaleidoscope Pro. If these variables are not part of the recording file metadata, they can be entered into the DB adjustment field. I can test the microphone sensitivity of the SM4 recorder with a calibration device. This calibration device generates a 1 kHz tone at 94 dB relative to 20 micropascals equals 0 dB. When I apply the test tone to the SM4 microphone, I see the microphone sensitivity is minus 32.5 dBV. I'll enter that sensitivity measurement under the advanced menu in the SM4. Now any recordings made by the SM4 will include the required metadata for Kaleidoscope Pro to calculate an accurate SPL measurement. It's also possible to use the dB adjustment to change the scale of the output results. I'd like to see my final output results in SPL relative to 0 dB equals 20 micropascals. 
1 pascal equals 94 dB relative to 20 micropascals, so I'll add 94 decibels to the Kaleidoscope Pro dB offset. I'll run the batch process using cloud-based computing. When the batch process is complete, I'll receive an email notification. I'll then log back in to the managed cloud account and go to the output folder to find the results. I'll download the noise CSV and noise by file CSV documents to my desktop. I have a choice of viewing the analysis results on a per file basis with the noise by file CSV file. For today's example, I'd like to see a display of sound pressure levels over time. So I'll work with the noise CSV file, which provides the accumulated level information from the files that overlap those time periods. I'll open the noise CSV file in my Excel application. This column shows the total of all adjustments that were made both in Kaleidoscope Pro and the SM4 recorder. You can see the minimum, mean, and maximum measurement columns showing levels over time for the A-weighted reference. If I had selected more than one weighted reference in Kaleidoscope Pro, there would be separate level columns for each weighted band. I'll create a pivot table to provide a graphic view of these relative levels. Because of the 94 dB adjustment I made in Kaleidoscope Pro, the levels are referenced to 0 dB equals 20 micropascals. I now see three curves in the table that represent average hourly SPL of the input files per month. An interesting aspect of this graph is that in the months of August and September, the average minimum SPL is generally higher than in other months. I don't know why that is yet, but Kaleidoscope Pro has pointed out that something different was happening in those months, and that may warrant further research. This is the type of information I was hoping to find. Kaleidoscope Pro is a powerful tool for audio analysis, including minimum, average, maximum, and cumulative sound pressure levels.